Okay, so if the large signal model of PNP was pretty much similar to NPN, the small signal is identical, and I mean like exactly identical to the NPN. So absolutely no change from PNP to N, from NPN to PNP. So if you look at these two small signal models here, this one is for NPN, this one is for PNP, and since we're talking about the change, it's not like basically uh, even like basically the direction of the currents. Uh, are, are the same and the value of the resistance like we, we don't have to even do like VBE we, we don't even have to like convert VBE to VEB and stuff like that okay so the small signal model PMP transistor is exactly identical to that of NPN and this is not a mistake because the current direction is taken care of by the polarity of VBE right so yes I know that like the changes uh, are different for the PNP and NPN but then we have already considered that in the large signal model so for the small signal model everything is going to be identical okay so just to compare let's actually draw the small signal model for this these two circuits for one of them the uh, RC is actually connected between well RC is always between connected to collector on one side but then for uh, the NPN transistor, it's between the collector and VCC. For the N for the PNP transistor, it's actually between collector and ground, right? But then V out is always uh, defined as the voltage across collector with respect to ground. So voltage at the collector, not across collector, sorry. At the collector with respect to ground for both cases, okay? And the input is actually always connected to the base. Now, uh, and this is the input signal, by the way. Uh, for the NPN, I'm just going to say that, well, I know that base is here. I have an R pi between base and emitter, and I know that I have this voltage controlled current source between uh, emitter and collector. So this is GM V pi, this is R pi, and the voltage across R pi is V pi. This is my base, this is the emitter, and this is the collector. Okay. Since the question is not telling me to, to, to ignore early effect, I have to actually include the early effect. So the effect of or the impact of early effect on my small signal model was this R0 thing. Okay, so now this is collector. Okay, so I have my transistor. Now let's connect the rest of the circuit to it. So emitter is connected to ground. So I'm just going to connect that to ground. Base is connected to the input signal source. So that's my VN. And collector is connected to a resistor to VCC. And I've told you last week why a constant voltage source such as VCC, which is a DC supply, is seen as a ground in the AC analysis or in the AC uh, small signal model. So RC is actually between V out because collector is connected to I'm calling the voltage of the collector V out, right? So RC is going to be between V out and ground, right? Again, just to remember, when you have a DC voltage, because we are in this small signal model, we're modeling anything that is changing, and we're modeling those changes using resistors or current sources and stuff like that, right? DC voltages and DC currents are not changing, so we have to zero them. For a DC voltage to be zero, it's basically... We know that it should be short circuit and this VCC is really the and the notation that we have here is really representing a voltage source between that that node and ground with a value VCC right so if I short that voltage source I'm gonna have well VCC connected to ground that's why I get this model okay now let's do it for the PNP now for the PNP I know that emitter is on the top I have a resistor again, R pi between base and emitter, and I have this current source going from collector to emitter, GM V pi, and V pi is the voltage between base and emitter across the R pi. Emitter is connected to ground, base is connected to my input signal, And also I have early effect, so I have to have this R0 between collector and the emitter. And collector voltage at the collector is called V out. 
oh by the way i have this rc from collector to ground okay and that's it i'm pretty much done so why did i chose these two circuits is because i want you guys to actually spend as much as time needed to appreciate that these two are actually equal so not that every two circuits are actually equal but then for these two circuits although one of them has pnp and the other one npn although one of them has an rc between the supply and collector and the other one from the collector to ground from the ac analysis from the ac for the for the small signal model you can see that the, the circuits are identical meaning that you look at it so v in is actually connected to the base emitter for both of them is connected to ground the R pi is between base and emitter. Even the polarity of V pi is positive on the base side, negative on the emitter side. The dependent current source is flowing from collector to emitter. The R naught is between collector and emitter. And RC is between V out and ground for both cases. R RC and R naught are actually in parallel with each other for both cases because both of them are on one end connected to one node these two are the same node and on the other end again both of them are connected to ground so they are actually in parallel uh, for the npn case is actually more obvious that they're in parallel so they're both connected to the v out on one end and to ground on the other end okay so you can see that although you have two different circuits their small signal model could be actually identical to each other simply because the pnp and npn uh, have exactly the same small signal model and the second reason that these two circuits had the same uh, small signal circuit in the end was that VCC and ground, like having a DC voltage or ground is pretty much the same thing in the small signal analysis. So like it didn't really matter if my RC was connected to VCC for one circuit and for the other circuit to ground. In the small signal model, both of them becomes ground. Okay, so let's do another example. This one is actually quite instructional. It doesn't have a lot of circuit analysis involved in it or any kind of like math. Uh, well, it has some math, but not. it's not the big part of it. The big part is actually uh, kind of relating uh, basically something that we have learned before to transistors, like basically connecting uh, what we learned in, uh, for diodes to what we have, what we will see for transistors. Let's say that we have an NPN transistor like this, where the collector and base are actually connected to each other, or a PNP that collector and base are connected to each other, right? And uh, I actually, um, I encourage you, I'm gonna solve the question for NPN, and I encourage you to do the same thing for PNP and see that you get the same results, right? Because we're gonna talk about something related to small signal model, which we know that it's identical, right? So uh, the question is telling us that if the collector and base of a bipolar transistor are, uh, transistor are tied together, a two terminal device results, right? Because, well, now we had the three terminal uh, device, but we shorted two of them together. So like I can call this terminal collector or base, and this is emitter, same here. Emitter here is here, collector or base here. So it's a two terminal device. Uh, the question is telling us that determine the small signal impedance of the device. So like in the small signal model, if I want to replace this device with a, with a resistor or with an impedance, what would be that in, impedance, right? And assume no early effect for now, okay? So let's actually draw the small signal model of a, an NPN and see what does this, this collector to base shorting result uh, basically results. So I have the small signal model of a transistor is just a nice pi model that I've had up to now. So I have, I have this GM V pi, and I have this R pi that I have V pi here. Okay, the voltage across R pi is V pi. Now, the emitter is one terminal, the collector and base are actually connected to each other. So I can just say, I have this connection, and delete this part and call the other terminal, the base terminal, the other terminal, okay? So this is how the, the small signal model of this transistor looks like, right? Now, if I wanna find the resistance of this, I, I know from electrical circuits that whatever resistance, equivalent resistance of a circuit like this should be taken care of by Tevin and equivalent uh, impedance, right? Or Tevin and equivalent resistance. 
And since I have a dependent source in my circuit, I cannot really turn it off. It's a dependent source. So I actually have to use the other technique that we learned in electrical circuits where we actually connected a V-test like this and said that if I calculate, if this is I-test, if I calculate the V-test over I-test, then that would be the resistance. That, that would be the effective resistance of this circuit. Okay, so let's actually get to the work. So um, I know that I have I-test, I have this current, and I have this current, right? Let's call it I-1 and I-2. So I can say that I-test is equal to I-1 plus I-2. Um, I1 is actually V pi divided by R pi, and I2 is equal to GM V pi. Now, I know this from my circuit that VT is actually equal to V pi, because they're both the voltage across the resistor. So I can say that IT is equal to VT times 1 over R pi plus GM. And I can say that because I know that R pi is actually beta over GM. 1 over R pi is GM over beta plus GM. So this is equal to VT times GM times 1 plus 1 over beta. Now, knowing that beta is typically a very large number, I can just approximate this 1 plus 1 over beta as just 1. So say that this is approximately VT times GM. Therefore, I can say that VT over IT is approximately 1 over GM. Okay, so the resistance of this thing, and then what is GM? GM was IC over VT, so this would have been VT over IC. Okay, so if you have a transistor with the collector and base connected to each other, um, we can... We know that you can actually, in the small signal model, you don't actually have to draw the small signal model. You can actually replace it with a simple resistor that is uh, well, equal to VT over IC. That helps us a lot in, in multi-transistor kind of circuits where you have different transistors and you don't want to actually have all these kind of the small pi models of uh, transistors connected to each other and then have to write a lot of KVLs and KCLs. You can just replace this entire thing so the small signal equivalent. So when you're drawing the small signal model of a, of a transistor like this, it's going to look like that. So VT over IC. And on one side you have the base or collector, and on the other side you have the emitter. Okay? And you can imagine that if you did this for a PNP, since well, the, the small signal model of the transistor would have been the same, uh, you would have got the same results. But I do encourage you to actually try that yourself as well. Now, what is the other thing that is instructional about this? I claim that I could have actually guessed this value a lot simpler than this. It would have been a smart way of solving things, but it, it would have definitely been an interesting one. So knowing from the physics of the transistor, I knew that, let's just talk about the NPN, right? Same thing is applicable for PNP. I know that I have an N here, a P here, and an N, right? And I know that I have a diode here and another diode there. The moment I short the collector and base together, I kind of shorted this diode out of the question. So from a three-terminal transistor, I reduced my circuit to a two-terminal device because I shorted this P and N externally, then that diode doesn't the diode between the base and collector doesn't doesn't exist anymore. So I'm just left with a diode between the base and emitter, or between collector and emitter. That's the same terminal. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. What was the resistance, the small signal resistance of a diode? It was VT over the current of the diode, ID. So in this case, because the current through this transistor is actually IC, then I can write that the small signal resistance of this diode is actually VT over IC. So by just knowing that, by just making this observation that by connecting collector to base, 
I'm making my transistor a single diode instead of two diodes or two pn. Uh, I'm reducing to, uh, from two pn junction to a single pn junction. I could just say that well, this is a diode. I know what is a diode in the small signal analysis. I know that it is a resistant, and I know that what is the equation for its resistance. It's basically the Vt over the diode's current. In this case, the diode's current is actually the collector current, so it's going to be Vt over IC. Okay. This is the reason that this configuration, either of these two configurations, where the collector and base when C is shorted to B, so when base and collector are short circuited to each other, we say that we have a diode connected transistor. So the term diode connected transistor, you might actually hear it a lot later. It just means that the collector and base are shorted together and your transistor is really a diode from, uh, from now on. And you can just imagine that in this small signal model, it's just a resistor. Okay, so with all the discussions that we have up to now, we have completed chapter four of our textbook and uh, I'm pretty much done telling you anything I wanted to tell you about bipolar transistors. Chapter five, we're going to start it uh, after this, after this week, and it's going to be basically about bipolar transistor amplifiers. So we're going to make amplifier circuits using bipolar transistors now that we have learned about them. So it's uh, critical for you guys to actually fully understand how the transistors are working as a single device uh, before actually we get to talk about using them in bigger and more complicated circuits in the next chapter. Okay. So uh, as a last slide, I just want to leave you guys with a practice problem. So uh, I'm asking you guys to draw the small signal model for these two circuits. There's nothing new about them, meaning that like you're just going to have to follow the exact same approach that we've learned up to now. It's just that it's a bigger circuit. So like you're going to have two transistors. So like, for example, for, for the, the one on the, on the left, the collector of Q1 is connected to emitter of Q2. Actually, on the right, the same thing. Uh, but they have different kind of circuit topology. I want you guys to actually draw the, and they both have one NPN and one PNP. So things are interesting in these circuits, but nothing that you can't really solve with your knowledge up to now. Uh, I want you guys to actually draw these small signal models and also try to see that they're actually exactly the same. Um, if you had any questions or if you wanted to check if you actually done it right, this is the example 4.21 on page 160 of the textbook. So we can go there and look at the solution and make sure that you did it right. If you had any questions, of course, you're always welcome to uh, contact me and talk to me over Zoom over and uh, during the office hours. Thank you.